Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Look Past Limits. If you're new here, I'm Wendy. And I'm Steve. And for the last couple of months, we've been touring around BC and our home here. A couple of weeks ago, we made it to the Rockies. And this week, we are going to be... Driving the Icefields Parkway. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know the Icefields Parkway, it's the main road up through the Rockies. There's only one highway through the Rockies and it runs from Lake Louise in the south up to Jasper in the north. It's about 230 kilometres long. I think the driving would take just about three hours. Many people do the whole drive in, in anywhere from the three hours to the one yeah. day. Um, and basically there's, there's not many routes off the drive and there's just a ton of beautiful things to see along the way. It's quite unique that you can see pretty much everything either just from a parking right next to the highway or like a maximum half an hour walk or something. Yeah, so. the diversity is amazing as well. There is beautiful lakes, all the mountains, glaciers, wildlife. It's just incredible. Um, so we hear. So we hear and we are going to try and take two days. We decided that we will stay just about halfway uh, on the road and do it over two days. We've got the extra time, but there's not really that many places that you can stay on the way to break it up any more than that. Yeah, so basically we'll hit the road early in the morning tomorrow, try and catch some nice morning sunlight. And yeah, we're super excited for it. Yeah, so. looking forward to it. Come along and see the Icefields Parkway with us this week. It's an early morning, so excuse my look, but there's a black bear next to the road. Black bear having his breakfast. Who's that over there in the bushes behind the car? Ah, it's a bear. So here we are, first bear sighting on the Icefields Parkway. That didn't take long. That's incredible. degrees now it was free earlier but we finally found the spot for breakfast so we left camp early this morning without any breakfast we wanted to hit the road whilst there was still the nice light Wendy's just preparing some breakfast here just now and we're about to have breakfast with a view of a glacier look at that these views are just becoming normal to us now but that is absolutely incredible so breakfast's finished with a beautiful view it's getting a bit warmer since coming in so i might take some of my 10 layers off <laughs> We've just came two minutes from our glacier breakfast spot and we're now at Bow Lake.
to Bow Lake from here, the water looks even better. guys have a good look all the way back there in the distance that's Beito Glacier and there is two waterfalls coming down feeding the river and the river feeds the beautiful lake <laughs> So where are we now, Softy? We're having a lunch break at Waterfall Lake. When we were back at Peto Lake at the last stop, we were higher up there and you could see, looking down in the distance this way, you could see the two waterfall lakes, these ones that we're at now. Um, and this turquoise colour of the water is just really incredible. Um, but you could see how it happened from the Peto Lake as the there's glaciers everywhere here all the way along but we could see the one that the water was coming from and you could see the glacier water running down the waterfall through the rocks and as it runs through the rocks it grinds up the rock and there's some silt left over and as it comes down into the lake the rock that's left is almost like a flower-like substance and it's those tiny particles of rock that the water's floating through that creates this colour. And then there was a river linking the Peto Lake to this one and to the next one. It's just spectacular. This is stop number five. Where are we going now? Mistaya Canyon this time. <laughs> Let's go and see. So this one's a one kilometer walk there and back from the campsite. But loads of the stops that we've stopped on so far have been a pull out right on the side of the highway. It's just awesome how accessible this all is. Marble 
fabulous, isn't it? Not sure if you can see up the top, but it looks like there's a fresh dusting of snow. Uh, we're just talking about if that's even possible in August, but when we set off this morning it was 3 degrees and it's still a double of altitude from here, so maybe. Peito Glacier is creating all this beauty. This is us still following it down the stream. It went through a few lakes and now it's turning into a river. It's really amazing how the water can carve the limestone into those shapes. It's so cool. So we took a turn off the Icefields Parkway Road at Saskatchewan River Crossing and we've headed east towards Abraham Lake and this is where we're going to stay tonight. Fendi's just getting the table and chairs set up and what about this for a spot? Good morning from our beautiful campsite at Abraham Lake. Uh, it's 6.30 and we're ready to hit the road again. The second part of Icefield Parkway is waiting for us. Watching out for wildlife. That's my morning duty as a co pilot. Drivers on the coffee. <laughs> so we've been making our way up through this valley. It's been really dark because we've still been in the shade from the tall mountains on either side of the road. But we've got up to this pass here and the sun's out, so this will be our breakfast spot. First stop of Icefields Parkway, day number two. And this is actually the second coffee of the day already because we had a quick one before we left Abraham Lake this morning. Unfortunately no major wildlife sightings yet this morning. We got on the road early because this is the best chance to see the wildlife at the side of the road when it's still 
dark and in the shade and there's not too much traffic but nothing yet so we'll quickly munch this breakfast and then hopefully when they get on the next stretch of road we'll maybe see something. Icefield Parkway is a popular drive and most people do it in an afternoon or maybe in one day but we were lucky to stay on the campsite at the uh, Abraham Lake and I think it's really awesome if you can split it in two days. It's just really overwhelming to take all of this in uh, and after yesterday we, we were both really tired and I just wouldn't enjoy the rest of the drive as much so I'm really glad that we've got another day and we've got a whole day again to see the second half of this beautiful drive. It also helps that we've got the place to ourselves because in a few hours time this parking will be jam-packed with all the crowds. <laughs> Second stop today, we're at Athabasca Glacier and we're just going to walk up there um, to see the toe of the glacier. So here's where the glacier was in 82 and back there on the road, just about where I'm pointing now, just as we came in off the main highway, there was a sign that it was there in 1925. And it's still nowhere to be seen yet. So we're nearly at the toe of the glacier, you can see it there. Just down here we passed a sign that in 82, it was around here and right down when we came off the highway there was a sign about here that at 1925 that's where the glacier was so it covered this whole area now it looks like you're on the moon or something it's a crazy landscape It's a bit chilly up here though, the glacier creates its own weather system and when the wind comes across the glacier here, it's called catabatic winds when it's on a downward slope like this and the air comes across the glacier and the air temperature is so different from the ground temperature and the glacier cools the wind as it comes down. And we're standing right at the bottom of it here and we're getting the wind alright, it's bloody freezing. Should have had a hat on. and up the falls.
So this stop is called Goats and Glaciers. We don't see any goats and we don't see any glaciers, but it's cool either way. It's beautiful. Look at the river, that's just awesome. So if you're not already fed up with this scenery that we're showing you, we've got one last waterfall and it might actually be our last stop. We're closing in on Jasper now, so we're at Athabascus Falls. Let's go see. Just about in Jasper and we've just spotted another black bear just strolling along at the side of the road. So after two beautiful days on the Icefield Parkway, we got to Jasper. We got ourselves a pitch on the Whistler's campground and Steve's making some delicious dinner here. It's a awesome end to our beautiful trip. Quite happy. So, what's the evaluation of the Icefields Parkway? Mega. <laughs> Incredible. No, it was. It was really awesome. Hopefully it's came across in the video how we saw it, that you guys could see it like that as well. It's just unbelievable that over a hundred glaciers... Just everywhere the, the, you look. The scale it's... of the mountains, the colours of the lakes, like we're not editing like colour grade in no. this video at all. So the colours that you see on the video is just what the camera picked up. Yeah. Really awesome. If you ever have a chance to do it, go for it and enjoy it because it's just beautiful. There's no many drives like that that you can see so much on a one stretch of the road. It's awesome. Some of the best drives that we've ever done were probably in New Zealand, but and they were, they were amazing, but you, you saw like a couple of cool lakes and a couple of cool mountains, yeah. but this was just lake after lake after mountain. It just kept coming. We couldn't it believe amazing. it. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, if we can give you one tip, uh, we would say take as long as you possibly can. I think it's just far too much to take in in one afternoon. There's just so much beauty and to enjoy it and to really like take it all in. We, Just... we were knackered when we got back. <laughs> it was really good that on the last day there we managed to get straight into that campsite in Jasper. And, Definitely. But we were exhausted, but just mentally exhausted from 
trying to take in all that beauty all the time. It's just crazy. So yeah, if you can, try and do it in as much time as possible. We ended up seeing more campsites on the way than we thought there, there was. There is campsites on the way. It's Eskachow and River Crossing. There's a motel. And if you take a turn off, there is also a lot of freedom camps uh, at Abraham Lake, which is not too far. Uh, that's where we ended up staying and it was beautiful. Um, no, it's a bit of a detour off the main road, but it's well worth it. It's seriously yeah. cool as well. Hopefully you can see that from the drone shots and stuff. So uh, that's the tip from us. Yeah, and um, overall it was super touristy, but as with a lot of these things, there's a reason for it to be so touristy. We were originally thinking, could we somehow do it differently because this just driving and stopping at each place is the way to do the Icefields Parkway and we always like to do things a bit differently. But in the end, we're glad we've done it the way that we did. And it's, There's no yeah, need. It's just awesome. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed coming along with us. Hopefully it came across in the video as beautiful as it really is in real life. And if you ever get a chance to do it, go for it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, um, subscribe. Do so, please. <laughs> that will help us. And, and we'll uh, see you in the next episode. Next week in Jasper and Mount Robson. See you then. See you then.